Welcome to this video on dolphin click trains. Um, I hope at the end of this you'll have some more ideas on how to distinguish dolphin click trains from narrowband high frequency click trains which are produced by porpoises and a few dolphins and um, and some ideas about how to interpret the incredibly rich data set on the actual acoustics that you you get so um, here's a uh, a data file 181 days of data from the southwest of the island of Britain and you can see that there's um, quite a lot of dolphins almost certainly common dolphins in the orange quite a lot of porpoises um, and what I've done is I've gone to the analysis and I've analyzed the the porpoises so there's about a million porpoise clicks in this file um you can see the frequency distribution has got this single big peak at above 120 kilohertz the number of cycles in each click has got quite a high modal value here of about six or seven um cycles per click the the click rate for the porpoises has got a modal value of something like 25 clicks a second that's very typical and another sort of peak up here at around 600 so if we now select just the dolphins and we do analyze again so it's it's read the the data it's pulled out 2.5 million dolphin clicks you can see the frequency distribution is hugely different you've got all these low frequencies the number of cycles in a click's gone down it had a modal value of six now it's one um the click rate is substantially lower and the high end peak which was a sort of gentle bump at around 600 is now much sharper peak around 800 per second we won't be looking at those particularly in this video they could be feeding buzzes or social communication um what we'll do at this point is zoom in on um some dolphin um clicks over here towards the end of the file just drag it across there um we're now down to one minute in the in the low resolution over there so if i hit the down arrow we zoom in and start seeing a lot of um dolphin data so uh, what we're seeing here we've got frequency and to train q class which is also um showing us the amplitude but actually if we select amplitude um and refresh this we get this kind of colorful display um i'm just pulling that down. and what what's happening here is i've set the the display on the display page to show uh, i'm about to set it to show color clicks by train number okay refresh um so this this helps to show you um when you have overlapping trains um what um which clicks look beyond belong to to which um and sometimes so these are fairly straightforward but sometimes that is quite um, confusing so here's an example where you've got two click trains um one of them's been, that's pulled out it's colored green the other one's colored blue okay so um and then in the top one we've got train species class well we know these are all dolphins so let's look at um a number of cycles there um <clears throat> Okay, so I'll just zoom out a bit to five milliseconds. 
and here we will just take a, a sort of train at random if we zoom in on this section here um what you're seeing here is um direct path clicks followed by some multi path um so multi path is the term we give so here's a sort of a, a clearer example um You've got like a loud click there, followed by a weaker one with a sort of with a particular delay that is repeated. You can see quite a number of times. So you could say, well, is that one dolphin doing paired clicks or two dolphins sort of chorusing <laughs> in synchrony? But actually, what it is is surface echoes. Turn off the point of text. There. Um, so the the dolphin um, is perhaps pointing somewhere near the pod, but there's another pathway where the sound goes up to the surface, comes down again, and hits the pod, and it takes that amount of extra time. And when it's travelled that longer journey, it picks up a lot more little clicks following it. So these we call multi-path replicates um so we can kind of infer that this dolphin is pretty close to the pod because there isn't much multi-path on the, the shortest pathway there's a lot more on the pathway that's gone via the surface and the surface may have created this because the sea surface uh, is kind of not absolutely flat um very rarely anywhere near it. So different facets of the surface are reflecting sound down. Um, so th this is actually enormously informative and useful because shrimp clicks never do anything like this because they're not loud enough. They're much, much quieter than dolphin clicks to travel up to the surface and back down again. Um, and um, this shows us that this group here, this one and this one, all came from, and so on, they all came from the same source. You really only have to look at about three of these to say that's got to be a dolphin, which is extraordinarily useful because the frequency content of any one of these, the spectrum, is not really able to tell you that because you get clicks with almost every kind of set of spectral characteristics you can imagine in the sea it's full of clicks and they vary a lot but this structure here with the multipath replicates is really useful um, and we're seeing these different frequencies within that that multipath cluster and this is shown down here in the frequency display so you get a bunch of um, different frequencies. So you get these kind of vertical lines. Um, the the length of these lines is longer if that component is louder. So so that will be the blue bars here, and then that yellow one, which was even louder, is actually this one down here. So just looking at this this kind of frequency display here, you can look at that and say got to be a dolphin um so um whereas if if this was a kind of chance collection of noise clicks you wouldn't get the repeated multipath and you wouldn't get this kind of structure within the frequency display um so we'll, we'll just take a quick look at click rates i won't go into too much um detail here because there are other videos on this um this red green thing this is when you've upgraded your file to a um uh the, the newer version of the fp3 file um and in the on the display page show some icis if you take that off you Oh no, you don't. <laughs> okay, it's still 
it's still showing us the the um smooth ICIs. Anyway, no problem. The this is the sort of click rate through the train and this train and this one and this one, they're not trains produced by the dolphin where it stops and starts. Um it is clicking probably continuously all the way through. It's just sweeping its narrow beam of sound around the, the world to to investigate it like you might shine a torch beam around and the pod just hears it as that sound beam flashes across the pod. Here there's one that's right off scale. Um so we'll just bring that down and you can see um this this click train is around um, 800 clicks a second. This may well be a social click train. Again, you can see this structuring with the, within that uh, display down there. And if we if we zoom in, um, yeah, this is is quite complex. But this click rate that's been pulled out looks um, very accurate. And in these social calls from dolphins, and, and it's true from porpoises as well, it is the click rate profile that carries the communication information, not the spectral characteristics. That kind of makes sense because what the frequency the spectral characteristics looks like depends whether the dolphin's looking exactly at you or slightly off to one side or another, whereas the click rate remains constant uh, or is, is sort of accurately represented over the, the angle. Okay, I'll just quickly switch to narrowband high frequency um, just to... to to show you the sort of contrast, and we'll go to a screen that's got quite a lot of them. So I'll put say two to show you the screen. Um, let's go. Um, so here you can see that the um, you you are getting a spread are getting some multicast but it's only spreading over a narrow frequency range down there and if i hit the graph button it's showing me the frequency spread in the f1 so it's it's very much the same as in the f3 and it it's very narrow so the the multipath <coughs> um is really useful if in here there were consistently lower frequency clicks in the multipath clusters. Um, you'd have to say that probably isn't a narrowband high frequency species. I mean, actually, here um, we're not getting a lot of multipath. Um, and there's there's just one one more thing to say there with pod data. You, you can see that that um, Some narrowband high frequency species do have some low frequencies, and they are mostly um, the dolphins that are using narrowband high frequency clicks. So they're in fact not absolutely rigidly divided, the narrowband high frequency and the broadband transient of the dolphin clicks, so called. And here we happen to have stumbled into some social communication of porpoises. So it's one thing after another with this data, but I hope you um I hope you found that useful and thanks for your attention.